Hi, I'm Gil Tae Song of Busan National University in South Korea. I'm leading this session uh, for the next three talks. The first speaker is uh, uh, proceedings presentation. Uh, the speaker is uh, Said Razgar. Yeah, I will proceed again. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, he's going to talk about conjunctive Bayesian networks to quantify the predictability of cancer evolution directly from mutational data. Yeah. Okay, I'm Uzgar Husseini. I'm a postdoc at Cancer Research UK, but I did most of this work here in Basel uh, with Professor Nico Berenwinkel uh, at um, DBSSE ETH. The aim of our work was to address a fundamental question at the interface between cancer genomics and uh, evolutionary biology, that is, how predictable is the evolution of cancer? Predictability of evolution, or the interplay between chance and necessity, is a long-standing question of evolutionary biology. Evolution is driven basically by a combination of stochastic and deterministic forces, and so it's important to dissect the relative contribution of these two uh, forces. St um, Stephen Jay Gould highlighted the problem of chance and necessity by employing the metaphor replaying the tape of life. He argued that because of the existence of numerous equally likely evolutionary trajectories, the outcome of evolution at large is not repeatable. Importantly, predictability is tightly linked with controllability. Once we can predict the outcome of evolution, we can manipulate the underlying biological system towards our desired goals. This is where evolutionary biology meets, meets <coughs> biomedical research, especially with regard to diseases of evolutionary nature, such as cancer. Cancer progression is indeed an evolutionary process that is driven by a by a stepwise accumulation of selectively advantageous mutations. Cancer progression, like other evolutionary processes, is a combination of both stochastic and deterministic forces, and so it's not surprising that there are evidence both in favor and against the predictability of cancer evolution. However, we do not know which side dominates the other one. To know this, we know we need a um, quantitative framework to systematically quantify the predictability of cancer evolution. That was the original idea behind this project. In general, predictability of evolution is quantifiable by analyzing mutational pathways, which are series of mutations fixed sequentially in a given population. I have provided a simple example here. Let's consider four binary mutations, which results in 16 genotypes. And genotypes are arranged here such that pair of genotypes that differ by a single mutation are connected to each other, and genotypes in the same column have the same number of mutations. Every mutational pathway starts from the, the same genotype, the wild type one, the all zero vector, and ends in the same genotype, the all one vector, the fully mutated one. And depending on the ordering of these mutations, there are four factorial equals 24 possible mutational pathways. I have highlighted three of them with their corresponding uh, ordering of the mutations. With regard to the predictability of evolution, there are two features of these mutational pathways which are relevant. First, whether all of these mutational pathways are feasible or only a small fraction of them are feasible. Second, whether the probability of these feasible mutational pathways are the same or they, uh, they differ, differ from each other. Therefore, to quantify the predictability of evolution, we need to somehow identify the set of feasible mutational pathways and their probability distribution. Evolutionary biologists have addressed, have, has, has approached the um, predictability of evolution using the concept of fitness landscape, the, uh, a framework which was originally devised by Cell Wright. The genotypes are arranged in the, uh, the same as what I explained before with an additional dimension that is an empirically determined fitness associated with each genotype. 
For a given fitness landscape, both the feasibility of mutational pathways and their probability distribution can be determined based on SSWM assumption, which is widely used in, evolution, in evolutionary biology in analyzing fitness landscape. SSWM stands for Strong Selection Weak Mutation Rate. Here are the steps for quantifying predictability of evolution based on the SSWM assumption for a given fitness landscape. Here, uh, this example of fitness landscape, uh, the fitness is color coded according to the color bar. The first step is to identify the set of feasible mutational pathways. According to SSWM assumption, a mutational pathway is feasible if fitness increases monotonically along the along with the pathway here in this example five mutational it is the case for five mutational pathways so five mutational uh, pathway among the 24 possibles are um, feasible here then the second step is to um, quantify the predict the probability of each of these feasible mutational pathways the probability is um, based on sswm assumption is quantified as the product of the um, normalized fixation probability of each of these mutation, mutation, mutational steps along with the pathway. <clears throat> Finally, predictability is quantified as one minus the entropy of this probability distribution divided by maximum entropy. Maximum entropy is obtained when all mutational pathways are feasible with the same probability, in which case predictability will be zero, minimum. In contrast, Predictability will be maximum if only one single mutational pathway is possible, in which case the predictability will be one. However, this conventional method of predictability quantification cannot be applied for cancer evolution because it's in, uh, impossible to measure the in vivo fitness effect of um, cancer mutations, and also it is very challenging to infer empirical fitness landscape for cancer from mutational data. Therefore, to estimate predictability of cancer evolution, we aim to, to come up with an alternative method that is independent of fitness landscape and is based solely on mutational data. For this purpose, we wanted to use conjunctive Bayesian networks, CBN model, which models the waiting time of arrival of mutations. Waiting time of mutations evolve according to a hidden Bayesian network which encodes the restrictions in the temporal ordering of mutations. For a CBN, in a CBN model, a mutation is allowed to arise only if its parental mutations are already present. For example, in this small Bayesian network, the, where I have mentioned T1, T2, T3, T4, T1, um, mutation one and two can arise independently because they don't have any parents, but mutation three occurs only if mutation one is already present, and mutation four occurs only if mutation one and two are both already present. Waiting time of a mutation is modeled using an exponential distribution of parameter lambda plus the maximum waiting time of its parental mutations. Based on the set of observed genotypes in a population, in a maximum likelihood setting using EM algorithm, the set of lambda parameters and the structure of the hidden Bayesian network are inferred from the data. Note that here the framework is completely independent of fitness and our, because the input of the CBN model is purely genotypic, vectors of ones and zeros. And here are the steps for quantifying predictability using conjunctive Bayesian network. Uh, the set of, first, the set of feasible mutational pathways are identified based on the structure of the maximum likelihood um, CBN, uh, CBN model that, that is inferred by the model. Um, for example, in this CBN model, there are three restrictions in the temporal ordering of the mutations, which results in only five mutational pathways to be feasible among the 24. And then, in the second step, the probability of each of these feasible mutational pathways are quantified based on the lambda, corresponding lambda parameters of the mutational steps along, the, along with the pathway. These lambda parameters are estimated from the CBN model. Finally, predictability is quantified as one minus entropy of this probability distribution divided by maximum entropy. Ideally, the set of feasible mutational pathways that are identified based on the CBN model should be the same set of feasible mutational pathways based on the underlying fitness landscape. For example, in panel A, 
C according to CBN model, there is no restrictions in the temporal origin of mutations, and uh, correspondingly, the fitness, in the fitness landscape, all 24 possible mutational pathways are feasible. In contrast, in panel C, the chain of restrictions in the temporal ordering among mutations results in only one single mutational pathway to be feasible. Therefore, to check the validity of um, CBN model, we need to check whether this equivalence holds. To do so, we generated 200 fitness landscapes, more than 200 fitness landscapes, and first we applied the conventional, the first method of um, predictability quanti quantification directly on the fitness landscapes to get the first measure of predictability. And then from each fitness landscape through evolutionary simulations in which an initially wild type population of um, genotypes are subjected to mutations and selections, 20,000 genotypes are generated. And then we apply the CBN model on the generated genotypes to get the second measure of predictability. Then we check whether these two measures of predictability are equivalent. Do they correlate well? We found that uh, CBN-based predictability correlates strongly with the conventional fitness landscape-based predictability with Pearson's R equals 0 0.92 and the regression line is almost close to the identity line, which shows that the two quantities are almost the same. Therefore, we concluded that CBN model correctly reflects the underlying fitness landscape. Then we wanted, uh, we aim to use um, our framework to analyze the real data, real genomic data. We wanted to estimate the predictability of 15 cancer types using up to 20 driver genes, but, um, from both TCGA and MSK impact data set. However, for analyzing real data, there were two major statistical obstacles, or namely robustness and scalability, because in our simulations, the genotypes were binary vectors of length seven, which were small enough such that CBN model could um, um, efficiently and robustly infer the parameters and the structures of the model. However, by increasing this, the length of this genotype vector, and the space of possible um, Bayesian networks um, increases uh, super exponentially, and also the number of mutational pathways grows as the factorial of the number of um, genes that we consider in our analysis. That makes the, the quantification even harder. However, we, we came up with a very simple trick that is um, quantifying predictability of a set of n genes based on the predictability of smaller set of n prime genes in which n prime is a subset of the original n. And um, using both simulation and real data sets, we showed that this approximation strongly holds. And here are our final uh, estimates of predictability for 15 cancer types using both TCGA and MSK data. We uh, observed that for majority of cancer types, the predictability is uh, much higher than 0 0.5, and also, which importantly implies that only a small fraction of uh, mutational pathways are feasible, ranging between 0.4% and 0.0004% of the possible mutational pathways. Therefore, um, we concluded that um, cancer progression is evolutionary constraint and and so it's uh, remarkably predictable. Therefore, this um, set of uh, feasible mutational pathways, we believe that are a great source of information that needs to be explored further in future studies. Finally, we uh, we validated uh, our approach um, based on empirical data. Um, uh, empirical data available for um, uh, these 15 cancer types, and namely, um, mutational load, that is average number of mutations per megabase pair, and also um, intratumor heterogeneity, average number uh, which is quantified by, um, we used three quantities to, for this um, intratumor heterogeneity, uh, average number of clones, mean clonal mutations, mean subclonal mutations. We observed that our estimates of predictability, that is the y-axis, is Significant, significantly anti-correlated with all of these four quantities. That is completely in line with our expectation, and so our CBN model is further validated based on empirical data that, um, that makes sense. 
Uh, in summary, CBN model, uh, we have uh, used a CBN model to quantify the predictability of cancer evolution directly from genotypic data without the need for fitness, measuring fitness or estimating it. And uh, we developed an approximation scheme that enabled robust and scalable estimation of predictability from high dimensional real nutritional data. And finally, cancer evolution is remarkably predictable, and so there is high potential for systematic identification of repeated evolutionary trajectories that is of um, uh, relevance in precision medicine. I would like to thank my co-authors, my supervisor, especially my ATS supervisor, Professor Nico Berwinkel, for original suggestion of the project and also the CBN model and all of his support, and uh, my current supervisor, Dr. Florian Marcos, for additional support additional support of this project, and also Professor Ramon Diaz Riarte from Spain for his assistance regarding the simulation step of the project, which made it much faster. And thank also for ISCB for helping me with the travel fellowship. And um, thank you very much, all of you, for, uh, for your attention. I, if there is any questions, I'm here. Tell us, is this on? Yes. Uh, can you tell us a bit about the landscape you simulated, how you simulated it? Uh, and I guess in light of your comments later on, they only gave rise to one subclone, right? Two? One single subclone. Oh, yes. Um, yes. Um, um, Basically, um, all of our, in, in all of the fitness landscape, the highest fitness was a assigned to the fully mutated uh, genotype because we wanted to uh, analyze all of these pathways, otherwise it will right. not fit. So what about the complexity? How did you actually generate this? The complexity of? Yeah, how, how many you know, paths were? possible through the lens? Uh, yes, so we had seven, in our simulation, we had seven genes. So seven factorial, which e e equals uh, around 700 uh, po potential pathways. Um, and um, in, uh, so we, we used two different uh, fitness landscape. One, we called it DAG derived and one uh, DAG, um, DAG representable and DAG number presentable. So basically, we wanted, to, we wanted the fitness landscape to represent some restrictions in the ordering of the mutations. In the DAG representable, we, um, we had some pre-specified ordering of the mutations. So uh, some fraction of the, uh, the mutational pathways were feasible and some non-feasible. So for non-feasibles, we assigned a fitness zero. But for the DAC number presentable, we also randomly chose some of those uh, which were allowed, also zero uh, fitness, to make it more rugged. Even in that case, the equivalence of a CBN and fitness landscape, the correlation still preserved. Yeah. Thanks. Yes. So basically, we binarize them. We have, uh, for example, a population of patients, and we have their mutational data. We check, for example, only 20 driver genes, and check whether this specific patient has mutation, has non-silent mutation in that specific gene, and then this will give me a binary vector. So these binary vectors will be the input of my yeah. model. Then, CB yeah, CBN model it, it does it, actually. CBN model uses a maximum likelihood framework. This is not done by me. A previous paper by Nico and uh, his PhD student uh, in 2009, they um, developed this uh, inferential scheme that they, they take into account all of this. So the, it's a maximum likelihood framework using EM algorithm. Yeah. Thank you.